Hi, I'm Dalen, and today we're starting a new exciting build. We're going to be building a power wall for off-grid and on-grid purposes. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the battery pack that we're going to be using. It's a 2012 uh, 24 kilowatt hour pack out of our Renault Fluence. Unfortunately, I lost the footage while I disassembled it. So that's a shame. Uh, some interesting parts about this pack is actually, uh, you can see here on this cooling fin, uh, here's the Renault logo. So this pack actually has this um, forced air cooling uh, stuff, uh, heat sinks uh, put on it. So it's actually better cooled than a Nissan Leaf pack would be. So I'm hoping that even though this pack is uh, quite old, um, it should still have uh, a quite good state of health. But we will see that later. But okay, I'll, I don't need that cooling pot. Um, I'm not going to be pushing it hard. Uh, next step is to disassemble this pack into tinier pieces because it's still set up for uh, 400 volt DC. But we're going to be reconfiguring it to a 48 volt system. So let's go. So like I mentioned, uh, unfortunately you missed the initial teardown. But uh, I've gone ahead and removed the uh, well, while I still had my high voltage gloves on, I removed these interconnect uh, links. So now the pack is at a much uh, safer voltage to handle. So if I measure from the right to the left, it will be open loop. Like there's no connection from this side to the other side. Hard to see on camera, but I'm measuring here on there. But if I measure like this, so the end segments, uh, each cell is now at around 59 uh, volts DC. So I won't be needing the high voltage gloves in order to tear this one further down. So makes it simpler. So with the plastic cover removed, you can get a much clearer view on the cell layout and also all these um, uh, balancing leads that are these um, tiny ones, these voltage measurement points. And here you can see also that this link in the middle was removed and that is what makes it much safer to work with. But uh, before you go ahead and remove these uh, upper bolts, you need to uh, disconnect all the cell uh, bolts first, because if you try and uh, remove these, you can actually crack the mounting points on the cells. So it's very important to start with yeah, removing all these copper bus bars. So let's do that. Okay, so with all these bolts removed, we can now carefully peel back this entire, uh, what do you call it, sandwich of copper plates and connectors. Try to be careful to not ruin it because I want to uh, maybe reuse some parts of this uh, later on. But with this part removed, we can now actually try and free the cells from this metal cage. So on the end, we have these end plates and uh, through all these cells there are four of these threaded rods going through all the cells and keeping them under compression. And you want to have these cells under compression otherwise they might uh, swell a bit uh, when they are uh, fully charged or uh, at quite low state of charge so they like to flex a bit. So we want to minimize that because that means it would break these copper bars if these threaded rods wouldn't be keeping everything together. But before I remove these uh, rods, I'm gonna remove these uh, black pieces first. So yeah, let's do that. Ok, 
Okay, so with those black parts removed, we can now remove the compression rods. And these are gonna be under quite some tension. So it's worthwhile to take it slow. And um, once you have taken a few turns, uh, move to the adjacent one. And yeah, just keep going slow. Voila! They are free. <laughs> Plate remote. Uh, now we can reconfigure this into a more manageable, uh, maybe config of uh, was it six or seven each, in order to, in order to reach uh, 14s. So let's do that. Okay. So welcome to the workbench. Uh, we're now going to be assembling our new um, like cell module. And we're starting with this uh, compression plate uh, end plate, and you, you will soon see why these are very important. So we're gonna take six of these modules, and I have these uh, notches that line up with these notches, and that's very important to get them the right way around. So like this. Now we have one cell, and then in order to stack the next cell on top of it, this is only specific to the to the like first version of the leaf cells. You need these um, metal spacer things uh, that slot in to those holes. So they create something for the next cell to uh, sit on top. And there are two versions of this. One is long and one is short. So now I will continue this for a bit and yeah. Okay, we're starting to build some height here. I will need six modules in total. Now we have four. And um, the compression plates are especially important because uh, check this out. These cells are very bendy. Like they want to be compressed in order to, to actually uh, have somewhat of a stable layout. Uh, so the distance between these holes, like when you make the copper bus bars or whatever material you use, uh, if you don't use compression plates, uh, they will like wiggle under load and they will probably stretch and rip these bolts apart. So the compression part is super important here. But I will continue. Okay, now it's time to add the threaded rod to this battery. So. I'm just going to measure out how much I need of this and then I'm going to cut it to length. Okay, now I have uh, four rods cut to length and I'm going to use some uh, bolts and washers to install this. So, let's go. Wow, this looks like a cylinder head. But no, it's actually a battery. And now I have all the rods in and we can torque these to spec. Uh, I can still like wiggle the entire pack. So yeah, I'm gonna hunk these down and we can continue. Okay, so the cells... Raphael. Okay, so the cells are now compressed. I actually took this one home because I intend to use this battery at home during the winter. So I'm gonna need to construct uh, six more of these. Uh, so I get a total of seven. And we're gonna put them all in series when they are done. And this will bring the total voltage up to 48 volt. So that is a 14S configuration. And why did I choose 14S? Well, it's a quite common size, both for on-grid and off-grid purposes. Uh, lots of inverters are suitable with this um, 48 volt configuration. That's also quite a good one because 48 volt is compatible also with 
lead acid batteries. So if you're upgrading from lead acid to lithium, this 48 volt works really well for that. And um, in the next video, uh, I'm going to hook up all of these seven uh, stacks to a BMS. I actually have it here, but uh, we won't go into the BMS in this video because it's a super big topic. So I want to have that on a separate video. Uh, you can, of course, buy something super cheap, but the BMS especially is one place where I definitely recommend you not to cheap out on, because that one will protect your investment from burning down. So, uh, that's the first uh, one of these videos that I want to put out. So this is kind of more like how to, how to rearrange the cells into the correct layout. I actually can show you here. I, I did a quick uh, sketch on how I wanted to do this on paper before I set out to work. And um, yeah, I hope you learned something more about uh, using these uh, older LMO uh, packs for stationary storage, a bit about cell compression, etc. So, see you in the next video. Bye.